Hello, Michelle. How's everything? Hey, Lindsay. Everything is good. How are you? I'm feeling great today. You know, we are actually recording today on a Friday and who doesn't love Friday? <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't? Yeah. I feel like we normally don't record on Fridays. Like this is kind of right. like, if it, yeah, it's a novel <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah. This is interesting. So we both have that Friday feeling. The Friday feeling, the TGIF. Yay. That's right. That's right. So, but Lindsay, yeah. I have a question for you. Okay. I'm ready. Did you take a lot of trips as a kid? Like was, were your, did your family travel a lot? I would say so. I mean, I wouldn't say a lot, but I think once a year we took a summer family yeah. vacation, you know, always chaotic and <laughs> crazy. But yeah, we did that. We did yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Same here. Like actually one of the, I would say one of the highlights, and I'm sure my brother would agree that you know, one of the highlights of my childhood was going on vacations. Like sometimes it was the beach. Uh, yeah. Sometimes like we did a cruise once in, and like, um, and then my, my mom always had a dream that our first time in Europe would be on a family vacation. So like when my brother was in high school, uh, we, we went. And so, oh. um, but they always, whether it was the beach somewhere, just, you know, a smaller vacation or a bigger vacation, um, my travel was always very important and uh, such a highlight. So, well, that's kind of yeah. cool. And that, and that makes sense why you just took your kids to Paris and London. Right. Yes. So often we repeat what we have experienced as kids, which is pretty cool. So you're carrying that on and giving yeah. your kids that incredible experience of being in Paris, hearing other languages from yeah. a very young age. So lucky. Yeah. I, mean, I didn't start traveling internationally until I was 18. And so I never traveled internationally with my family other than going to Canada. But I don't know if that counts. In Mexico, I guess we went to Tijuana once. Oh, yeah, I yeah. Like I did 10, the Tijuana. It count. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't count. So yep. it was a really international travel, like really, yeah. really, you know, Europe or Asia. Asia or yeah. even South America, not just jumping over the border to say you've been in a, another country, you yeah. know? So yeah, we try, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're trying to get some big trips done and yeah. But I notice when we talk about our trips, people are always surprised that we take our kids. Like, so I always joke, Oh, the Paris trip was very romantic. <laughs> we always say, we always say we ruined a lot of people's dates. Like we'd go to like a mm. restaurant and then there's just screaming and like, yeah. Um, oh my gosh. Especially Actually, yeah. Well, that's a good question. You know, parenting styles in different countries, which we could get into another day. Uh, yeah, I would want yeah. our listeners to chime in on that one, right? Yeah. Actually, yeah. we felt very like welcome and good, but yeah, we always just felt like we were ruining people's dates. But yeah, people are surprised to take their like their kids, or you know, sometimes people say, "Oh, like why?" I don't. I'm sure you've heard people say this with kids and travel, like, "Oh, why would you bother taking them?" Um, you know, they can't remember it, so just take them when they can remember it. Oh, I think they, I think it's more of a visceral learning. I think they remember everything, but maybe not like mentally remember everything, but I think kids are like sponges. They learn things experientially, right? Yeah. So it becomes a part of who they are. Michelle? Right, right. Yeah, mm. I totally agree. So that's what we're talking about today. So before we get into it, we want to remind you guys, if you haven't already, please, please, please hit follow wherever you are listening to the All Ears English podcast. Let the podcasts come to you. You'll know when new ones are out. You don't have to search for them. Um, make it easy. Just yes. hit that follow button now. You got it, Michelle. I mean, now we're in the fall. This is go time. Go, go, go time, right? This is the time to build those good habits to get hooked on All Ears English. Again, we publish four days a week for you guys, and we have a unique focus on connection, not perfection. Love it. That's right. I love it too. Yeah. So guys, um, my mom actually sent me this article, and I was so touched by it because I it is so meaningful for me to introduce my kids to travel and love yeah. it from an early age. And so, and because I have gotten some pushback, you know, like, I mean, nobody's like mean about it or anything, but like, Oh really? With kids, like a lot of people questioning. Um, so it kind of validated my, my feelings about it. And I wanted to share it today because it, it also reminded me of our show and our listeners and our overall philosophy. So, yes. um, so yeah, so this article is from WashingtonPost.com. Uh, and it's, you know, my parents live in the DC area. Right, of course so they we read would the Washington getting... Post. Yeah, it's a very regional newspaper, right? So I remember when I went to college in Virginia, I would always read the Washington Post. That's yeah. so funny, but it's also a fantastic newspaper oh, with yes. a great movie about it, The Post, which we recommend to our listeners. Side point, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> but we're getting a little bit of a DC influence today from my mom. Anyway, so but the article was is called uh, "Is a big trip 
with your toddler worth it? What memory experts say is oh. your, your kid may not remember every detail, but it will leave a lasting impression. So that was advice by, I'm going to try and pronounce this, Chris Sh- what do you think? Maybe Shalks, something like Shalks, that. I would probably Shalks, say Shalks, yeah. Shalks probably. Right? Uh, yeah. July so the, 10th, 2023. July 10th. Yep. Okay. That's right. So, um, so this article was talking, you know, to people about like what kids might remember. So we're going to just talk a little bit about the article, um, and give our opinion and give you some tips as well. But basically, um, what the article talks about is that, um, neuroscientists and they talk about child development experts and psychologists, um, that it's, you're four years old when you start Mm -hmm like keeping memories um Mm. and your ability to like actually remember things is you know there um and they said that so it could be four but it could be more so that was from the article uh Lindsay, what do you think do you have any memory like do what's your first memory (laughs) this is a hard question right it's hard it's I guess it's around that time. I guess I remember visiting, like we call it the friendly farm, a little kid's petting zoo when I was probably five around that age. Mm-hmm. So four, maybe five, but it's a hard question. Cause how do you remember? What is the first memory? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's well, a hard one. Yeah, it's true. And some people have like really early memories. I think my mom remembers being in her crib and, and then, and wow. then, you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then okay. do you ever, do you have any memories uh, like where you're not sure if it's your memory or just because you saw oh, yeah, video, pictures? Like- all the time. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm video. saying. How do I know the difference between do I remember that or do I remember the photo I've seen over the years of yeah. that, or the story I've heard? Right? right. Well, my first memory, I actually, I mean, this, I don't know why, uh, but I, re- I remember being in preschool and uh-huh. I remember, but yeah, then I wonder, did this actually happen? Like, <laughs> I remember sitting in a circle in preschool and I remember I was wearing, I only have the view when I have the memory, I have the view of like the circle and then my foot. And I remember seeing a bug and I had like a white sandal on and I remember uh-huh. the view of my foot stepping on the bug. And okay. that's like, that's like one of my <laughs> earliest memories. It's a really great one. Uh, uh, but who yeah. knows? Like it may not have actually happened. Yeah. It just might not sure. have. Um, yeah. So, mm-hmm. but yeah. And then, I mean, so as far as travel goes, they spoke to a psychoanalyst named Claudia Louise, and yeah. she was talking about, um, you know, explicit memories versus implicit memories. Um, yes. And you might not have these explicit memories but you'll have like more you know memories that she talks about memories that are formed subconsciously um and what her what her quote is she said implicit memories get registered in the brain differently instead of going into a memory bank they set neuronal pathways that determine our future experiences Ooh, super interesting. So, you know, your kids may forget the logistics of what cities you went to, where you stayed, what district you stayed. They don't even care about that anyways, right? No. <laughs> it's more about their brains have been open. Well, I mean, certainly this is true in like raising bilingual children, yeah. right? So their right. brains have already been open to how to learn another, or just hearing another language, but also I think an openness to culture and openness to yes. different ways of life is so important. Right. Yes. Yes. And they do. They, I, I believe the article talked about that as well. Like, you know, I, I so one of the things we did uh, with my son was um, we took him. They had he loves Paw Patrol. Right. And we saw that there was a kid's puppet show with Paw Patrol. And yes. we went to this pup, uh, puppet show. It was in a small tent and there were a ton of kids there. And the whole thing was in French. And yeah, the, cool. The fun, the like the most interesting thing was, you know, we were watching him and at first it, he was looking at it like, what? Like he didn't know what was going on. And then he was laughing when the other kids would laugh. And oh, then horrible. he was like trying to like get into it and enjoy it in other ways, even though he couldn't understand the language. He was understanding, you know, the puppets, seeing the puppets and yeah, the other kids, yeah. what they were reacting to. So like, that's pretty cool. Like to, get, to have cool. those experiences. Yeah, that's super cool. I love that. And for our listeners, you know, a lot of our listeners do have kids, young kids. And, you know, if you are, are let's say, moving abroad with them, you're going to see them start to, just the mind start to open. What a gift, right? What a gift. Yeah. Okay, Michelle, do we have any, you know, 
keeping this idea in mind that this experiential learning, if we bring our kids abroad, what do we need to know? Are there any tips or anything else we should know here for our listeners? Yes. Well, speaking of tips, before we get into that, <laughs> we just did an episode, All Ears English 2056 yeah. was Don't yes. Have Cash, How to Tip at a Coffee Shop. So go and listen <laughs> to that as well. So, but now oh, on to- I like the connection. I like the, the yes. connection. <laughs> now on to different kinds of tips. So- Oh, man. So there's always these jokes about like, you know, when parents vacation with young kids, they come back and you need a vacation from it because there's like, you know, these jokes that basically you go on vacation and you're just doing all the same things that you normally have to do with your kids, but in a different place. And it's so true. Uh, but but it's still so great. So one of the tips I have is get your kid ready for the trip. So yeah, books. Uh, things to get them familiar. Um, so maybe anything, even anything, like, some, yeah. yeah, maybe I, what came to mind was maybe playing, like, if you know, you're going to Paris, playing some kids songs in French on the radio in the weeks leading up and sing along together. Even if, you know, I mean, you speak some French, right? Just yeah. singing along, just letting your child like hear the sounds of this yeah. language. Yes. Right. How Actually, great. yeah, that's something that we always do. We always try and find, it wasn't that. a kid's song, but we always try and like get into the music. Uh, like we search yes. for like some of the popular music and then we get into a couple songs. Cool. Yeah. Yes. So, um, and then also have them help choose what to do on the trip. And I think the article may have mentioned something Ooh. about this as well like you know I mean if it was up to my son we would have just been eating macarons for the the entire trip and like would <laughs> have just been wrong with that Michelle There's would have just wrong. been I mean we would have just been sitting in a room just eating macarons like <laughs> and that would have been the trip I can think of worse things I mean <laughs> that's true um but yeah like to give some options I mean my daughter is too little to help decide but like we would let my son uh, you know have some input have him have some say because I think that's building you know his brain as well yeah for sure and he can become the trip planner with your with your husband now <laughs> yeah, yeah. Said, oh yeah 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 yep. plan you the trips <laughs> i love it yes oh and that's good i have mm -hmm. to i have to remember i that these are these are uh, i agree with these tips but now i remember that they were uh, mostly from the article if not yeah all. yeah, so yeah. I, I, I have to give credit to the article on this yeah, because, of course maybe we uh, have our own tip like is there anything else that you guys did uh, you know that go you know, spontaneously or like, it, like, let me ask you a question. So in the moment when you were in the street and you saw, like you saw your son witness something different, I don't know, like what would be like someone purchasing a baguette and walking out of a, out of a uh, coffee shop or a bakery, which is not something typical in the States. Could you mm -hmm. maybe, did you stop and ask him like, what do you think about that? Um, this is a different culture. Like this is a different tradition. Mm hmm. Yeah, sure. Things like that. Um, and, and not, uh, I'm I'm trying to think of a specific story. But like, I would say the one of the, the biggest thing was that show. Um, that show was, yeah. you know, like showing that and also, um, oh, like, I mean, I told you we did the cooking class. Um, but also just teaching him like a little bit of the language. Um, we would see yeah. things and be like, oh, how do you say this in French? Oh, and one mm. other thing we did was um, we got very early on in the trip, we got this book. And it was so great. It showed the different, uh, uh, sorry for my terrible accent, arrondissements. And yeah, yeah. it showed and all, uh -huh. you know, they showed all of the, the them. And like every day if we would visit something, then he would say, oh, we went here. We were here. Here yeah. today or <laughs> like we, um we stayed near um do you know the pompadour center I also, yeah yeah mm -hmm. we stayed near there oh that's where we are like so <laughs> we kind cute. of would review things and Aww. um so he really like got to learn a lot about it and then you know even when we got back his teachers told me oh he told he, he was telling us about you know the, the eiffel tower and all these yes things. <laughs> yeah 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 i love it i love it it's good so it's important you know i want to we want to encourage our listeners, you know, think about this, like how, where could you take your kids? If you've moved to the U S with your child, just enjoy, kind of enjoy that experience, right? The immersion and seeing this new culture through your kids' eyes. Yes. Right, Michelle. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. So, and I want to um, just share one quote, what I always okay. think about with kids and travel um, is, uh, I'm not sure who said this quote, but I've, found, I've heard it many times. Uh, so I apologize, but it's deciding not to travel with kids because they won't remember is like not reading them books because they won't remember the stories you read to them. 
Yes. And you would never not ooh, say, oh, I'm not reading to them. Like, <laughs> I'm not <laughs> like what you're just going to sit them in a room. You know, we want to grow our kids' minds. So this really touches me. And I just feel like any experience, whether or not, listen, like travel, travel is expensive. It's hard to, you know, we don't all, you know, like, yeah. you just like pick up and go to, you know, this country and that country. And, um, but whatever new experience you can provide your child, a new way to learn a different culture, maybe you show them on YouTube a cartoon and a different different language, you know, just for, yes. just to give, it, it, give them. Yes. These I love that idea. Yes. Michelle, are you the there? Places. Hello. Yes. Oh, yes. oh, sorry. You cut out for a second there. Oh no. You cut out for a second. Yeah. So, oh, okay. you know, get inspired by today's episode. You know, it, it might not be the easiest thing to do. Right. But it, it like usually in life, the harder things are the better things, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. most things that are easy are not really, they don't move things forward in any substantial way. Wouldn't you say so, Michelle? Broadly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, go for it. If you're questioning, I mean, I, I have friends that they don't, you know, that they even just to do a day trip somewhere, just to go mm -hmm. to, you know, a city outside of where they live, an hour drive away. It feels a, like too much. Yeah. Feels like too much. And that's fine. But mm -hmm. so again, it doesn't need to be a giant big trip all the time, but just these yeah. new experiences I think are so important. Yeah, Michelle, do we have a very important poll today that we want to hear? We want to interact, guys, with you. We want to hear from our audience. Tell our listeners about our poll and what they should do right now. Okay, guys. So um, if you're listening on Spotify, um, yeah. you can get this poll. So we want to hear from you and we will share the results. Yes, so we'll please, update the results. Yeah. Yeah. So please vote in this poll because we want to know. And this is a great, cool new uh, way that, you know, we've been interacting with you over Spotify. And mm -hmm. uh, so go on over there and listen. So the poll for today is, Lindsay, do you want to read it? Yeah. So here's the question. You know, Do you think it's good to travel with kids? Should we say internationally to travel internationally with kids or do we, do we want to just keep that to travel with kids? I would say, I, 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 how about let's make it, do you think it's good to take big trips? Take big trips with kids. I love it. So tell us, right? What do you think? I mean, is it, yeah, because we might have, probably will have differing opinions. Some people may have tried it, it didn't work out. And so right. they're going to say, no, maybe too. not. And then other people are doing it. They're loving it. They're taking their kids abroad. Let us know. I want to know what our audience's mentality is here, Michelle. Yeah, absolutely. So go on and vote uh, in that poll. And we're excited to see your answer. Yeah. So takeaway today, travel is, we know travel is good for us as adults. So give your kids a little more credit, right? They can do it. Like they can handle it. I love yes. it. Uh, immerse them in the world. So inspiring. I love it. So definitely. Good. All right, Lindsay. Well, this was fun. And uh I will talk to you soon. <laughs> All right. I'll talk to you soon, Michelle. Take care. Bye. Bye.